धन्यवाद आपकी अनुमति से अगर मैं अंग्रेजी में बोल दूं, अब सब्जेक्ट जो बोलना चाहता हूं थोड़ा टेक्निकल थैंक यू अब आई थिंक दलूच पीपल हैव मेड इट क्लियर फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग of uh, the creation of india and pakistan that uh, they have had a problem with the accession of the state of kalat uh, to pakistan that has been the genesis of the problem and uh, while there are represented there is an eminent representative of the baloch people who could shed more light on this subject and also there is a mr tarik fatah who is a, such a learned person that he will uh, perhaps give us an account of this factor which has led to the alienation and the great troubles that that alienation has caused to the baluch people it would be in the fitness of things if i were to convey my understanding of where the problem lies because the problem was right from the beginning and if there is one uh, point which is still outstanding in the outstanding with respect to the partition of the subcontinent it is the baluch question it is that question that is the unfinished agenda of partition there is no other question that is the unfinished agenda of partition why do i say that it is my understanding that the state of that with respect to the accession of the state of kalat which formed the very heart and very core of baluchistan lay in two issues one was the nature of the state and the other was the status of the state this is a little technical so therefore permit me uh, to elaborate on the nature of the state of baluchistan was such that the nawab of baluchistan did not have the full authority without consulting his people and the representatives of that of his people to accede to the newly formed country pakistan many states including the state of jammu and kashmir acceded to india and all that was entirely legal because it was within the authority of the princely ruler to merge his state with the indian union but in the case of kalat the nawab did not have this authority he needed to consult his people and no such consultation was done when he finally signed the instrument of accession in 1948 in march of 1948 and the second was the duplicity that was practiced by the government of pakistan and under mohammad ali jinnah on this question and what was that duplicity that is also something that i think the people of india should know and i would i would request uh, uh, tariq fateh sahab and baluch sahab to elaborate on this but my understanding is this that it was the case of the nawab of kalat in the kalat state that the state of kalat was not part of the indian princely state system that they were independent of this and therefore they had a right to be not covered by the government of india act of 1947 under which kalat under which the indian princely states were acceding to the union now the problem was that the british had taken a lot of territory of the state of kalat especially along the afghanistan and iran borders including quetta which now is the capital of baluchistan on lease so therefore if kalat 
was accepted as an Indian princely state, the least territory would go to the Kalat state. But if it was held that they were outside the Indian princely order, then these territories would go back to Kalat, uh, would, could be inherited by the successor state Pakistan. So what did the Pakistanis do? And this happened 10 days before the independence of Pakistan, before Pakistan came into being on the 14th of August 1947. They first said, and this was with the collusion of the British, of Mountbatten himself. They first said that yes, Kalat is outside the princely state system. Once they said this, then they became the successors of the least territories, successors from the British. But on the 15th of August, they turned. Having got hold of the territories, they turned and they said, no, you are part of the Indian princely state system. So this was a record of duplicity, which I think alienated the people of Baluchistan, the people of Kalat and then the people of Baluchistan. And when the instrument of accession was signed by the then Nawab of Kalat, there was the first revolt which took place. And who revolted? The Nawab's brother himself. This is also a point which is important and perhaps and after that there have been five revolts but that was the first. So what does this establish? This established that Pakistan has always practiced duplicity and the use of force because when the Nawab of Kalat was unwilling to merge his territories, it's a very complicated business and I will not go into it, but when he was unwilling, what did they do? They sent their forces into Kalat. So the practice of duplicity and the use of forces, the use of coercion began very early. It began soon after Pakistan was created and that has been the hallmark of the policies of that state. Now let us come to the period subsequently. What has Pakistan practiced in the state of Baluchistan? They have practiced the most horrible form of human rights, violations, and this will be catalogued, I am sure, by our Baluchi friend and Mr. Tariq Fazir. But what has enabled them to do so? It is a veil of silence on Baluchistan. There is no scrutiny of what is happening in Baluchistan province because the press is not free, because the Pakistanis do not allow any journalists. There are accounts of foreign journalists being taken on conducted tours of Baluchistan but not being allowed to move out at all. And eminent Pakistani journalists, including Mr. Ahmad Rashid, as if having themselves conceded that what is happening in, in Baluchistan is never reported in the Pakistan media, leave alone the foreign media. Which makes the points that Mr. Sinha made, Mr. Rakesh Sinha made about the lack of interest, the lack of any investigation by the, the so-called upholders of human rights like the amnesty, all the more appalling. But there is one other point, the violation, the systematic violation of human rights in Baluchistan is part of the violation of human rights that is practiced in Pakistan as a whole. Only one example will suffice, the blasphemy laws that the Pakistan state has adopted. Under these blasphemy laws, there are countless innocent of all religions, Hindus, Christians, Muslims themselves, who are locked up, who are in danger of their lives because they have been accused of insulting the great religion of Islam. And on the basis of bogus charges, they are locked up and then the tragedy is that there are very few judges 
in of pakistani courts who are available and who are willing to accept and try these cases fail and when some pakistani political leaders like salman khan are willing to take up these causes they are killed and their killing is celebrated only recently one of the, the murderer of the governor the then governor of punjab who had raised his voice against this practice has been i think executed and that too under international pressure so therefore i think we are fortunate today that we have a representative of pakistan and mr tariq fateh who will be able to give us an account of what is actually happening in the province of baluchistan because of the complete lack of true information on the conditions in the province the catalog of human rights violations include disappearances as they are called and the pakistani courts including the supreme court of pakistan have gone into this issue but they find themselves helpless people are taken away and then to send a signal of fear their bodies are mutilated and dumped and i'm not saying this or no foreigner is saying this this is as per the testimony and evidence of the pakistanis themselves with these words i thank you very much